In this session, we are going to be recapping on a couple of areas within business maths. Just a reminder then, there are two key statistical techniques you need to be able to apply in this section. The first is regression analysis. Within regression analysis, you need to be able to calculate the line of best fish Following that, then, you need to be able to assess the integrity of our line of best fit by calculating and understanding the correlation coefficient and also being able to calculate the coefficient of determination. Now, in particular, in the first two bits, the calculation of the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient, the calculations can be quite lengthy. So it is possible the examiner will just give you a theory question in these areas um, to ensure you understand what these calculations mean. The second statistical technique is time series. Within this, then, you need to understand the four components of a time series. Remember, we have our trend, our seasonal variation, cyclical variation, and our random variations. In terms of calculations, you would only have to calculate the trend and the seasonal variation. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. Now, our first question relates to a smaller section within this area on spreadsheets. So we're asked which of these statements are correct. So in terms of business spreadsheets, you only need to understand what they can be used for to assist us with preparing information. So the first statement says, a spreadsheet is the most suitable software for the storage of large volumes of data. Well, this is not correct. So we wouldn't use a spreadsheet to store large volumes of data. A database would be more appropriate for that function. We use a spreadsheet to manipulate and present certain pieces of information. A spreadsheet could be used to produce a flexible budget. Absolutely. Statement number three, most spreadsheets contain a facility to display the data within them in a graphical form. So this would be pie charts bar charts, and so on. The third statement, then, is correct. So the correct answer, then, which of these statements are correct? Two and three only. The correct answer is C. Having a look, then, at a couple of questions on regression analysis. First question, which of the following are feasible values for the correlation coefficient? Remember, our correlation coefficient is r. When we calculate r for the line of best fit, the value is always going to be somewhere between minus 1 and plus 1. The correlation coefficient tells us the strength of the relationship between our independent variable x and our dependent variable y. If the value is minus 1 or very close to minus 1, this indicates a strong inverse relationship between x and y, meaning as x goes up, y will go down. If our value for r is very close to plus 1, it indicates a strong positive correlation. If our value for r is somewhere very close to 0, then this would suggest that there is a very weak or no relationship between our x and y values. Either way, our r value will always, always fall between minus 1 and plus 1. 
which means in our list of options, the only feasible values for the correlation coefficient are 0 and minus 0.94. Options 1 and 2 fall outside of our possible range. So the correct answer then is B. Our next question again is a theory question. And this looks at, do you appreciate the difference between the high-low method as a forecasting technique and regression analysis? So we're told the following statements relate to the advantages that linear regression analysis has over the high-low method in the analysis of cost behavior. Just a reminder then of what we do under each technique. So if we're applying the high-low method to understand the relationship between our level of activity and our total cost, then what do we do? We look at a low level of activity and a high level of activity. We assume a linear relationship between these two levels of activity, and we establish the line that goes through the high and the low levels of activity. And we assume that this line represents our total cost at any other level of activity. If we're applying regression analysis, we are doing something similar. We are assuming, again, a linear relationship between our total cost and our level of activity, except with regression analysis now, we don't just look at our lowest and our highest level of activity. If we're applying regression analysis, we will look at all of the information available to us. So if we know what total costs are at five different levels of activity, then we will incorporate all of this information in the calculation of our line of best fit. And we use regression analysis to establish the line of best fit or the line that comes as close as possible to all of our known data points. And again, we use this line to forecast what total cost will be at any other level of activity. So if we have a look back at our statements then, we're looking at the advantages that linear regression has over the high-low method. So first of all, using regression analysis, the reliability of the analysis can be statistically tested. That is true. Remember, after we've calculated our line of best fit, we then can calculate our correlation coefficient. And that tells us how reliable our line of best fit is. Number two, regression analysis takes into account all of the data. Yes, it does. We use all of our known data points to calculate that line of best fit. Step three, regression analysis assumes a linear cost behavior. Well, this is true. However, it is not an advantage of regression analysis over the high-low method because we assume this linear relationship when we're using both methods. So they are the same in that respect. So statement three is not an advantage of regression analysis over the high-low method. So the correct answer then is B.